What's up guys, it's USA Specialist and this week's update will be the biggest change to Battlefield 2042 yet. From thermal optics to air vehicle changes, here are 10 major updates you may have missed. and Russia are both being accused of fielding armed no-pats in an escalating fight over vital resources. Right off the bat, Rao is seeing multiple major changes that could shake up the meta. His hacking ability will see a 3 second longer cooldown and a 0.75 second increase to the time it takes to hack an enemy vehicle, which are both pretty substantial nerfs. However, when hacking a vehicle, Rao will now mark the target just like a SOFLAM, allowing rockets like the Recoilless to lock onto the vehicle. This could be a huge new counter to vehicles, so I'm excited to see how it plays out. Moving on, in order to counter vehicle-based weapons, air vehicles will now be immune to lock-ons under 30 meters. This change won't affect jets, but will allow helicopters to duck under gadgets like the Javelin or Stinger, and will be added alongside a new change that limits the height of helicopters. DICE is working to keep the helicopters within range of anti-vehicle weapons, while allowing skilled pilots to fly fast and low in order to avoid rockets while also staying more vulnerable. Next up, Crawford will become a more vehicle-focused character with some notable changes. With his new move to the Engineer class, he'll always have a repair tool and will be granted the passive trait, Critical Repair, which allows him to repair vehicles and gadgets faster. However, Crawford will also be able to counter vehicles because his turret will now damage all vehicles, including tanks. While his damage will only be 0.1% per shot, his turret will be running at 1200 rounds per minute, so if anything he may be a good deterrent for aggressive vehicles. With the return of the class system, players will also see a return of many fan favorite gadgets. Depending on your class, players will now be able to utilize the Javelin, Claymore, Tracer Dart, EOD Bot, and Tug's motion sensor in All Out War. Also, it appears the MAV drone will be available in Portal. While many of these gadgets are great to see, there definitely appears to be a debate over things like the Claymore returning. But tell me what you think in the comments below. Now, speaking of debated gadgets, Thermal Optics will be making a return with Update 3.2. Once Update 3.2 is rolled out, players will find thermal optics within their weapon customization, ranging from a 1.5x thermal red dot to a 6x thermal sniper scope. These thermal optics are divided into weapon types based on their zoom, and their return has been hotly debated on Twitter. So tell me what you think below, are thermal optics cheesy or do they add to the military sandbox? Another major change for vehicle players will be the introduction of active protection on the Abrams and T-28. First introduced with the C-Ram in 2042, active protection will now be available on main battle tanks where it will help stop incoming rockets. While this is a great change for tank players, just be aware that the active protection system or APS won't stop the Tor railgun nor the Nordvik railgun rifle. While there are many changes to the meta coming with this update, one change I feel will be appreciated by many players is that the Recon class will no longer have sway with sniper rifles. When playing Casper, Rao, or Paik, your sniper rifle will immediately and constantly have steady aim. This will certainly be a nice advantage for the Recon players who actually snipe, so be sure to check it out.
A major quality of life improvement I haven't heard anyone talking about is that Year 1 Premium owners will now receive any Tier 0 Battle Pass items that they may have missed. If you have the Gold or Ultimate version of Battlefield 2042 and missed out on claiming these items over the past two seasons, they will now be rewarded to you upon signing in. This will encompass four items per Battle Pass, including a Legendary skin for both Boris and Angel. DICE has once again gone into fixed mouse input. According to the patch notes, they have optimized mouse input processing in order to ensure a steadier input rate and avoid spikes. Now, DICE has been working on this for years and hasn't fixed it yet, so hopefully after all this time, the team actually made a noticeable improvement. And finally, another small change DICE has made that could really help shake up the meta is the return of damage numbers. Now, when shooting an enemy, you'll receive damage numbers alongside your crosshairs and score. DICE has stressed this is an experimental feature and has turned it off by default. In order to display this feature, you'll need to go through the crosshair settings underneath display. Once activated, you'll see your damage output in the bottom center of the screen. Update 3.2 is a huge step forward for this game. With dozens of changes, a reworked breakaway, the return of the class system, and new gadgets, we finally may be getting the game fans expected from DICE well over a year ago. I'm excited to see how the meta unfolds because I definitely have some predictions. But drop your comments below and tell me who you think will be the next fan favorite specialist after this update. For everything else Battlefield, stay tuned and subscribe, and as always, thank you guys for watching.